This is a quick tutorial showing how to perform a CAD-based Neutronic simulation using DAGMC, OpenMC and Paramac. This is all on a Git repository, so the instructions and all the files you need are here as well. I'm going to work through this README and we're going to start by making a CAD file, then we're going to facet the CAD file and turn it into a DAGMC geometry and then we're going to do an OpenMC simulation on that. So the first stage is you will need to install Conda. Um, there's four different options that I know of for this, so I'll let you take your pick there. I've used Mini Conda and Mini Forge, but um, they, they will all work. So I'm just going to put that screen to one side and open the terminal by pressing Control, Alt and Tab and then I'm going to highlight the first command which puts it onto the clipboard and I'm going to press the middle mouse button in to paste it so if you see me doing this without copying and pasting that's, um, that's how I'm doing it so quickly so I've cloned and then I'm going to cd into the directory and then I'm going to make a conda environment using a file now this file is found in the repository, so let's have a look at the files. We've got a few files there, and let's have a look at the contents of environment CAD. So here, this um, environment file is going to make us a new Conda environment called envcad. It's going to use these Conda channels to search for packages, and it's going to find the Paramac a specific version and um, pip and then it's going to use pip to install Jupyter CAD query um, so that's all it it's going to do it's going to take a little while to do that but I will do that conda create command now and I'll be right back when it finishes okay this is now finished building the environment with those packages and it tells us in here to activate the environment it's also in the um, instructions. So we've now entered into that Conda environment and you can see the prefix of the terminal has changed. The next stage is to run the first script so I'm going to use Visual Studio Code to just launch that up and have a look at the code, um, the Python. You could use any text editor at this stage but um, this works fine. So it's a very short script and it imports a Paramac and then it makes a reactor. This one's got a full rotation angle of 360 degrees and if you want to know more about the options for this particular reactor you can go here and um, the, docs are, the docs are available to you. So it tells you um, about the various inputs. It's also described here as well. Super! So that makes a 3D geometry and then we're going to export it as a DAGMC H5M file and these arguments control the resolution of the mesh. The smaller these numbers, the finer your mesh will be. This other option is, um, is optional, but it exports the geometry to a HTML file, which means we can open it without um, CAD software. We can open it with just a browser. You, you can also export to STP or STL files for CAD if you prefer. OK, let's run that script now. So I'm typing Python and then 1 and then I'm using tab to autocomplete the rest of the file name. I've just pressed enter and you can see that the geometry is being meshed and that was pretty quick. We have a look at the files that are present and we can see that there's a dagmc.h5m that was just made now and a dagmc.html which was just made now as well. I'm going to use Firefox to open up this HTML file to show you what it looks like. There we have our geometry and we can zoom in and, and pan and importantly we can identify 
what objects are what. So there's a lower blanket and there's a lower vacuum vessel and you can make things transparent and clipping and all sorts. But the main thing is we, we want to identify these names. Right, so let's continue. So we have a DAGMC H5M geometry. That is our Neutronics geometry. When we installed the environment, we installed the Paramac, which also brings in as a dependency Moab. And Moab has a command line tool called mbconvert, which has a, a lot of arguments you can pass to it. But in this case, we're just going to convert our Neutronics geometry to a VTK file. And now you can install Paraview with sudo sudo apt install Paraview. And I've already got it installed. And then you can launch it with Paraview. And you can open up the DAGMC VTK that we just made. So this is um, what we're going to be doing the neutron transport on. This is what the neutrons will see. And I've just selected surface with edges and I also clicked that apply button perhaps a bit too quickly. So you can slice the geometry to have a look inside at this point. And we can see that this is meshed at a reasonable resolution. Importantly there's no overlapping meshes and that looks fine. You could remesh with um, finer tolerance but I don't think we need to this time. So let's get on with simulating then. So we're going to make another Conda environment and let's have a look at what's inside this environment. So we just looked at the contents of the environment file and it's using one Conda channel now. It's called ENV Neutronics and it's got OpenMC. Now I happen to know, because I helped make this one, that it contains DAGMC as well. Um, and then pip, and then we've also got OpenMC data downloader which will download your nuclear data and set your OpenMC cross-section environmental variable. One less thing for users to do. And then a, a mesh tally um, converter which will take a mesh tally and save it as a VTK file. Great, so let's install that environment. And this will take a, a few minutes so I'll be right back. OK, so that Conda environment has installed and now we will proceed with the next step. So that's to run the second script. But first let's have a look at it before we run it. And we'll just talk through what's going on here. So I've opened it up with Visual Studio Code. And now this is an interesting command that I think is worth knowing about. When you install Moab, um, you get the MB convert, but you also get MB size, which is able to scan through your DAGMC file and pull out all of the names of the materials used in there. So you see we've got vacuum vessel and blankets, um, and these are volumes in the geometry which are tagged, and we need to assign materials to these volumes. So this is what we're doing as the first stage in the OpenMC file. I've got an OpenMC material and I've set its name to vacuum vessel. So then it will be um, it'll be taking that place of vacuum vessel. Um, I've made all the materials as simple as possible, so just iron and lithium. Um, in a real simulation these would be much more comp complicated with lots of isotopes, but I just want to keep this example minimal. So, I've got labelled materials for everything that appears in the DAGMC file, and then I bundle my materials together in the normal way that you do in OpenMC, into this materials object. And now this is the, um, this next bit is the downloading of the nuclear data. So I pass in the materials object and I specify the um, evaluation of nuclear data that I want, and that will download and um, just work, which is useful. Right, this next bit is a little bit tricky to get your head around, but 
what we're doing here is making the geometry. I know we've already made the geometry when we made the DAGMC file, but what we're here doing here is embedding the geometry into a constructive solid geometry or CSG uh, universe. So every neutronics geometry needs a boundary where the neutrons stop being transported. You can do that by including a graveyard surface in your DAGMC geometry, which we have not done. Um, so in this case we have to add a vacuum surface to our geometry. So I've made a very large sphere which encompasses the whole geometry and um, give it an, a boundary type of vacuum. And then I've made a region and said the region is below minus um, the vacuum surface. And then finally there's a containing cell which is made up of the region and filled with the DAGMC universe which is in turn the meshed geometry that we made. So it's just um, just kind of making a hybrid model from CSG and DAGMC that allows us to um, get the simulation working. And then finally the geometry is just made from this containing cell. Um, so one cell geometry, fairly simple. I've got a, a really simple point source here at coordinates 0, 0, 0, isotropic and it's a 14 MeV point source. I've got some settings here that specify the simulation intensity. You could increase these if you wanted, um, if you had a fast computer and you wanted a, a better result on the mesh. And then I start adding the tallies. So in this case I've named a tally TBR for tritium breeding ratio and I've given it a score of neutron in and tritium produced. This X is a wild card which means anything with the tritium. Anything like a neutron plus a tritium that would be counted. Or even nothing but just tritium that would be counted. And then I'm uh, adding in a blanket material filter so I'm saying record all the tritium production on this blanket material which is up here so there's our, our blanket. And then we'll just do this simulation on a mesh. We're going to make a, a 3D mesh which encompasses the whole geometry. Oh, and I just want to show you one quick way of finding the geometry size. So you can open your VTK file and click apply. And if you click this data axis grid, it will show you um, that you need a, um, a mesh from 300 to minus 300, from 200 to minus 200, and on this axis, 200 to minus 200 as well. So that's where those numbers have come from. This is the, the other 100, 100, 100 are the resolutions in each dimension. And then I'm using this mesh tally. I'm using this mesh to make a mesh tally. Again, recording tritium production. Finally, I bundle the materials, the geometry, and the settings and the tallies into a model object. And I run the model. I don't need that bit there. Super. So let's run that code now. Oop. I think I forgot to make the environment. <laughs> Oops. Oh no, I forgot to activate the environment. There we go. Silly me. Let's just check that's in the documentation. Yes it is, I just missed it. So reactivate that. And then we're, we'll run the Python code. So it's now downloading the nuclear data. It will only do this the first time you run it. And it's getting iron and lithium and not much else. And then it started OpenMC, read in the nuclear data, simulating all 10 batches, and there we go, that's finished. Right, so the next stage is to extract the results. So let's have a look at the script. 
another short script imports openmc we need that and this is the mesh tally package which you can read more about here but it just extracts a mesh tally and converts it to a vtk um, so the first line is reading in the state point file we can see that we produced a state point file that's got all the results in mesh tally and cell tally and then we're getting a tally by the name which is the tbr tally which is this cell tally that we made first and then we're just printing out the results Oop. and we're doing a little bit more we're also getting another tally the tbr on mesh which is this tally here tbr on mesh and then we're just writing that tally, tally straight to a VTK file. So I will run that now. And there you go, you can see it's printed out the tritium breeding and the, the uh, standard deviation. So we've got a tritium breeding of just over one, which is great. Um, that might be enough for tritium self-sufficiency. And we've got a VTK file. So let's load up ParaView. And we can open that new VTK file. And I'll just close that warning. And I click Apply. And then I'm going to close the warning again. Select TBR Mesh on the drop down menu and select Surface. And it looks like we've got a nice mesh tally result. We can't see it very well, so let's do a slice. Slice right through the geometry and then we'll have a look. This um, use of log scale maybe makes it look a, a little bit better. And then we can also apply a threshold just to remove things which are totally zero. And that's where our tritium is being produced in our reactor. Super. That makes sense because uh, the neutron source is right in the middle and uh, this is all lithium. There's a little gap at the top because that is made of steel and we're not tallying the tritium production in the steel. Uh, also it would just be low anyway. Great. So that's about it. We have made a CAD geometry, um, converted it into a neutronics geometry, and then simulated it. We used Paramec to make the CAD geometry, DAGMC to make the meshed neutronics geometry, and OpenMC to do the simulation. Thanks very much for watching. If you spot any issues or want to make any improvements, feel free to contribute to the repository. Um, Thanks. Bye.